Hello, hello everyone. And since this will be the last video of 2023, I thought I'd reflect on some of the things that have happened this year and some of the stuff I've been working on and show you a little bit of everything I got going on in my tanks. But most of all, I wanted to take the time to thank you guys for your support, for watching my videos. 2023 was the first full year that I have been doing my website, markshellypox.com, full time. And without you guys checking my stuff out and buying my shrimp and my plants and some of my plecos, none of this would be possible. You guys mean the world to me, and I appreciate it so, so much. I really, truly do. So on this tour of my tanks, I'm about to take you guys on. I get a lot of questions asking me, why are your tank so cloudy? What's the algae for? Well, you guys need to realize that I make my living off these tanks. And so there's always stuff breeding, digging around, messing around, pulling out plants, doing stuff like that, resetting tanks. So a lot of times these tanks it takes time to be bounced over time. And when you're doing what I do for a living, you're not doing it to make pretty tanks. Now, I try to make them look as nice as I can, but I'll let you guys be the judge of the hat. <laughs> All right, let's get started. So I figured I'd start off doing them in the way I started off. I set this rack up, well, I, I mean, I've had Aquariums my whole life, but when I started up with all this aquarium madness, I set this rack up in 17, the early part of 17, 2017. And so this was the beginning of it all. <laughs> now they, most of them were guppy and inler tanks when I first started, but this is what they are now. So this tank is a blue jelly tank. Again, one of those ugly tanks. But they just keep breeding like crazy in here, and I don't want to mess it up because of all my lines, I find blue jellies can be kind of finicky at times. So when I got a tank doing really, really good up with them, I try to leave it be, other than doing my water changes every week. And then here we have snowballs. This has been a snowball tank probably since the end of 17. This is one of my oldest shrimp tanks. It's always been snowball shrimp. And then this used to be when my old years ago, it was yellow, but now it's a blue dream project. Super good blue dreams. And then in this tank, we have my special Bloody Mary really project. I just recently reset, so there's not a whole bunch of shrimp in here. But since they reset, the new babies that are being born look pretty good. You can see there's lots of little ones back here in this tank. And most of them look like shrimp that we're trying to go after. Bloody Mary Rillies. And then here, this is my first 75 gallon tank, which has become my favorite size tank, but just so big. This is my, my red shrimp tank. My red Sakura reds. Looking really good. About time to do something with the moss. We got algae issue in here, but the shrimp don't mind that one bit. There's a bunch of pluckos in here too, but they all hide underneath the moss now. And down here was an orange project tank that I'm about to do something different with. I just have yet to pull the shrimp out and reset it. This started off being my guppy call tank. <laughs> and then we had this walk-in closet. And we used to have a deep freezer right here, and it broke. And so I said, I'm going to put some tanks in here. So I put up these five 20-gallon longs. 
And this is my fire red project. These guys are looking pretty dang good. I was getting kind of discouraged with my reds because this tank really had, this is a tank that stalled out on me. And they look pretty dang good now. So the red tank that I've reset and reset. Pretty good. And this is down below we have, and this, if you go back to my really old videos, I started calling this the shrimp room closet. I just had these five tanks in here just to breed shrimp. This, this was the first track I was, these shrimp are doing really good. And then below that is the red really project where I'm trying to create my own red reallys. And I'm not sure I've ever seen this many babies with so few adults. Yep. I think they're, they look better breeding out since the last time I reset it. So we'll see. And then down here is another 20 gallon long. And this is a Bloody Mary project tank. This is another tank. These few tanks over here hadn't been doing good. And then this tank down here is like a blue jelly backed up thing. I'm gonna do something different with this tank here for long. Oh, and now I have a five gallon bucket. When I did a bunch of work on my green jades, I found a few green reallys and tossed them in here. So I have like two shrimp living in a five gallon bucket. And I said, wife, please, please, please. I already got tanks. I could fit so many more tanks in here. Please, please, please. And she begrudgingly allowed me to do it. And so now I added 840s. And these were supposed to be for guppies, actually. Guppies and then when I set them up. I had some shrimp in some of them, too. And then... Hey, I think I could stuff in five more when they get on longs like I did on the other side in here. So I did that. And these tanks have been various things over the years. They're just like backups and projects and stuff like that. So let's look at the first 40 gallon breeder with eight in here. This is a blue jelly. I love these guys. Love, love, love them. This is a tank that's been reset not too long ago. It's getting better. It's getting better. So it's adjusting. And then the really nice light I had on this tank went out. So just got a shop light. All these just have shop lights on them. This is the orange tank. This tank is gone bananas. Look at those orange shrimp. Good grief. <laughs> and then down below this is the Blue Dreams 40 gallon. That is going to have to be reset here for long. Let me see. I can, this tank has tons of plecos in it. Look at all those shrimp right there. This is the next project. We got all kinds of tala. I just scooped out tons and tons and tons of duckweed in this tank a couple days ago. And there's already more popping up. And then here we have the a 40 gallon Bloody Mary's but we have exciting developments in here with the long thin green dragon plecos these guys are doing super good just out of the blue they decided we're going to start breeding all the time I'm like alright that's super awesome
And then down here is the Skittles tank. These are the shrimp that, for whatever reason, they get pulled out of various tanks. And I toss them all on here and sell them for cheap on the website. Some cool ones. This tank, the lights are fading badly. I have some tanks like, I have a couple tanks like that. Where the lights are fading badly and I have new lights sitting in the box. I just haven't put them up yet. And then here we have the green jades, 40 gallon. They were just recently, I just did a video working on this tank, pulling out lots and lots of shrimp, adding it up. And it's still kind of cloudy, but it's doing good. It's doing so good that the pluckers said, hey, blue eye lemons, first nose pluckers said, hey, we're gonna make a full bunch of babies. And then down below that, we have the blue velvets. And I just recently ripped a ton of moss out of here. These are like the blues who are not the best of the best in my blue project tanks. And I sell them cheaper than the regular blue dreams. All right, let's start on the other 20 longs. This is a Project Green Jade tank. This is probably some of my very best greens. And then down below that, we have another Project tank where I'm trying to make the blue red really is using Bloody Marys and Blue Dreams. And we got some progress, but I'm to the point now I'm going to let them breed out and hopefully we get more good ones. That's what I'm hoping for. Probably not. Not, I'll pull everything. Oh, there's a good one that I'm going after kind of good it's kind of like they want to go black like the carbon blue rillies it's hard to get that red in there that's a really good got really good red but just a slight slightest hint of blue in the body still a progress still a project for sure yeah, and this is one of them tanks where you ain't gonna see nothing. It's a backup project blue jelly tank. There's gonna be a lot of shrimp in here. It's like I drop a little bit of food in there every day. <laughs> Suck out 20% of the water every week. And there's, there's like brush. Weird algae I don't usually get in this tank. But the shrimp don't seem to mind. I don't ever get this algae on the glass either. I get this dusty stuff on some tanks, but same thing as here back up. Snowball project. And then down here, this is where I gotta change my light. These are my super awesome orange shrimp project. I'm going to try to breed a bunch of shrimp outside and I want the very best shrimp I have. I'm going to be getting these for my projects. We're outside this spring. So that's everything in the closet. And then I had to do a tank in the front of the house where everyone actually lives. because This is just like 
back here in the back of the house just like me and the wife's hangout so it wasn't too big of a deal but then i started putting tanks in the front of the house huh. and this is the 75 gallon green jade my most embarrassing tank i am going to be doing a reset on this tank obviously no matter what i do hair algae is it just grows faster i can rip it out in this tank so and this tank never had that problem so i'm not real sure but these these were from my original group of green jades these guys are really good so the shrimp don't mind but I've been telling myself for the last month, this is the job I gotta tackle. But as you can see, oh, I'm dreading it. I keep putting it off. But this video will be coming out with me working on this tank. And now we're back to the back of the house. And I thought, well, this is where I ate this little touch thing I inherited from my great grandmother. I've always had a 20 gallon tank. I wanted to do a 29 gallon panda guppy tank. And so I set this tank up. And there's still some pandas in here, but now it's just my coal tank. Or truthfully, over half these fish in here was when I was scooping the guppies out of the pond. And the 75 gallon that I put them all in <laughs> was guppy soup and I could not possibly put any more fish in there so I just started throwing them all in here and then of course the the coals I find I put in here too so then I got the wild hair I brain my wild haired brain idea whatever however the saying goes to put stock tanks in the house and we've got a crypt farm in here there's a bunch of albino bristlenose pluckos in here and hundreds and well probably thousands of bloody mary shrimp bloody mary shrimp and new plants i'm testing out florida sunset crypts yeah, and so then after I did this, I said, oh, wow, I'm going to clear out an area where I had my airplane, my RC airplane collection. I'm gonna, I got rid of all that stuff, except for a few that I wanted to keep. And I'm going to put one of these in the bedroom and my wife. That, that took me a long time to talk her in to let me put stuff in the bedroom. And so here we are in the bedroom, and I just pulled out tons and tons of moss out of this. So this tank is a complete and total disaster, but there are thousands and thousands of blue jelly shrimp in here. And mermaid weed and moss. That's what's in there. And then I was like, oh, then she's letting me put that in the bedroom. Why? Oh, and the airplanes. <laughs> That's what's above the blue jelly pond, the few I used to scratch build them. That one even has a camera in it to do FPV, and I, you can see by the dust on it. Not been messed with in years. And then I thought, let's do another big tank in the bedroom. Now, this tank has been a battle. We've got south facing window. South facing window, I'm not really interested in blacking out my window because I like natural light in the house so what I've done is I start off with three of these 40 watt shop lights and I've got two of them unplugged so you can see the moss in here so getting really thick and bushy it's getting long and stringy and really the only algae we got is right up there and this tank decided to get infested with duckweed so this is another project there's thousands upon thousands of blue dream shrimp in here. I mean, these guys are really good. I, I worked really hard when I got these guys up and going. 
I'm sure I'm gonna have to. So this tank will be coming up soon. We'll be pulling lots of stuff out of here and figuring out what to do with this. I think I wanna do a stem plant farm and less moss. I think is what I wanna do. But we'll be working on this one a lot here soon. Then I started selling tons and tons of moss and realized it sucks to pull moss directly out of tanks. So then I set this guy up to be just a moss pond. And the guppies I keep are my own line. And so I keep a backup of those guys in here. And I'm also trying to do an experiment as growing crypt up out of the water. Seems like they get, they start going and they get so tall and dry out. So I don't know how this is gonna work. I'm sure it takes time. And then in January of 2023, I decided I'm finally gonna do it. I'm gonna try Caridina shrimp. So I set this tank up and it's been through several reiterations and just now finally having halfway decent success with these guys and then outside this is my in-ground pond it actually has not gotten below 37 and it's like 43 or 44 right now even though we've had days, it's been really mild. It's been holding up. No big snow yet, so that's what we've had like 50 mile an hour winds. It's held up fine. And this is the money rack. This is the last thing I've set up. I've still got to put tanks on the top. But so far here, we have new shrimp lines. These are the first new shrimp lines I got in like six years five or six years and they are all breeding doing good these are red riding heads i did have a piece of food out for them and there's a bunch in here visible but they've all kind of dispersed since but there's quite a few babies in here Look at that group of them right there in the moss. And these guys are very unique line. I'm enjoying them a lot so far, but they're starting to breed out. I've already had several people ask me when these will be available and we'll see how they breed out. But I'm hoping maybe I'll make some, not a whole bunch. Might be able to make some available in the spring. And then we have the yellows, and these guys are doing awesome, awesome, awesome. I don't know if I've ever had a brand new line. They're still young a little bit. As soon as they got of age, they buried up, had all the babies, all the babies lived. And then they all got buried up again. So there's all kinds of varying sizes of little yellow shrimp in here. And the females, they all just bury right back up. These guys are pretty awesome. Same with these, I've already had a lot of you guys asking. I might be able to make some available in the spring. And then we've got the black roses next to here. I have not seen a baby yet. And I've seen three or four buried females. So there very well may be a little baby shrimp in here somewhere. These guys were a lot younger than the yellows, but they're catching up and they're doing just as good. And then here, I got some imported shrimp, orange reallys, and look at that stuff right there. I've never seen it before, so I'm fairly certain this is Vorticella. And uh, I'm treating the tank with Prozzi Pro, and they also have, there's a few of them that look like they might have some Scuderella. 
So it's not a, like, oh my god, the shrimp are going to die situation. The shrimp are fine. I'm very happy with the shrimp. Super happy with the shrimp. They're awesome. That's just the name. That's what you deal with when you get shrimp from... Even if they isolate and quarantine, there's still going to be some get through. But this, this patch is all the way growing up. You saw the tank of it. Never seen it on the, on the shrimp. But these guys have been doing good. So it's a good thing. I even made a video when I did talking about anything that goes in this tank is getting bleached. And I've always did that, and I'm glad I did. I'll just toss these in the general population. I normally do things. I'd probably be running into issues. But not life-threatening to the shrimp, unless you're completely infested, but, you know, I sell shrimp. I can't be selling shrimp. And then down below that is my 75 gallon crypt garden. Three different kinds of wind dead eye and my rainbow lightning guppies. The guppies that I've been working on started getting these males that look kind of like that. Lined them out with a red in my guppy pond I used to have. It's just my guppy coal tank. I started getting ones that look kind of like this. Lined them out with virgin red mosaic females. And then just was super picky for a couple years or so. That's what we got. And so I took my first, the whole reason I had to set this rack up when I did is because I set I've been working on that group of guppies for years <laughs> and I wanted to put some outside so I got my old goldfish pond that, that pond we showed earlier that was in my old goldfish pond I've had for like 14 years so I wanted to do guppies in it seasonally and I even threw some shrimp in there so the shrimp you see in here are the shrimp that I could catch out and then there's a greenhouse cover obviously and we're trying to keep the shrimp that are in there alive and the long thin green dragon plecos they throw some short fins and so I toss those in here and there you have it from start to finish Mark Shelley Aquatics and I joked about my wife but without her support obviously I couldn't have done any of this so Thank you, Brandy, and thanks to each and every one of you for watching. Watching my videos, buying my shrimp, my plants, my fish. I appreciate it all. Thank you guys for watching. Bye.